Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about progression of characters in Star Citizen once we have a more fleshed out game, I suppose. Some uh, of this should start to be seen with Alpha 3.0, some forms of actual progression that are tangible. Uh, this video is going to be a bit theory crafty, but based on what CIG and Star Citizen peeps have said so far, keep in mind that stuff changes and evolves soon. But there, there is that. Uh, no stats and experience. It's important to remember that Star Citizen has no stats uh, for players, no levels or experience points. Um, all ability comes from that player's actual personal skill um, at the game and armor, equipment and choices uh, with their loadouts and ships. That sort of stuff allows you to do things. Your ship allows you to do certain things. Your armor and equipment allow you to do certain things. So what can we expect in form of progression um, in the Persistent Universe in the future? And what do we currently have now? So at the moment, in 2.6, um, there is currently no real progression. Uh, the 2.6 patch has limited persistence, uh, but it does allow you to earn Alpha UEC. And in Arena Commander, you're, you can also earn Rec. Uh, there is a limited amount of stuff that you can do with Alpha UEC and Rec, though. With Alpha UEC, you can buy clothing. Um, armor, weapons, uh, all for first person shooter use. With Rec, you can rent ships uh, as well as weapons and components, uh, but they're just for use for uh, Arena Commander. Uh, and the Rec system is kind of like a permanent part of the game, and that's sort of pretty much fully fleshed out at the moment. But the Alpha UEC and UEC stuff isn't. The idea of Alpha UEC is eventually uh, enabling us to buy ships and other games, um, other items in game. Um, so Alpha UEC will get wiped from patch to patch, but eventually that will become UEC. Uh, and UEC, closer to full release or at full release, will allow us to buy just everything in-game. So ships, items, first-person shooter weapons, everything. And those purchases will be semi-permanent. I say semi-permanent because there are ways that you could lose them. And if you're not insured and stuff, if you die with certain equipment or whatever, you might lose that piece of equipment. They are also considering adding extra alien currencies in the future, but UEC um, will be the main form of currency. And earning it, for me, is the baseline form of progression in the game. As nothing is EXP based, um, your bank balance and assets determine what you can do or your value in the verse. Whereas EVE Online, for example, it's your character skill points and assets together that are important. Um, skills allow you um, to do certain things. So you can only pilot certain ships if you have the correct skills. In Star Citizen, you're not locked out of anything, um, at least with hard skill choices. Now, costs of ships. Now, there are going to be severely limiting factors with ships that is just cost-based. Now, space ships, uh, we're going to have their prices significantly changed compared to the IRL cash values that we see at the moment. Uh, it might take you a couple of days to earn enough UEC in your Mustang Alpha to purchase uh, an Avenger Titan. I'm literally pulling these figures out of my arse, so um, there are no hard figures for this sort of stuff. What they do in the future, they will require balancing. They actually have tools to work out how much ships will, should be worth in the verse based on um, how much the uh, raw materials are worth, how much time it takes to manufacture them in-game, and that sort of stuff. Um, but larger ships are going to cost significantly larger amounts of UEC, and capital ships will be an appropriately huge amount akin to buying a military ship in real life, um, and they can cost millions or billions even. So just bear that in mind. Those capital ships are group projects. Now, that's what they are supposed to be. It's not supposed to be something that everyone just goes, and I've been playing for a week, and now I have an interest. Careers. A massive pull of Star Citizen is the idea of choosing a career like Bounty Hunter or Explorer, for example, and then working your way up, starting for, if you're Explorer, um, uh, getting a Mustang Beta, flying around searching, um, finding some, some cool bits and bobs, some alien flora and fauna, then maybe getting yourself a Reliant Zen or um, a freelancer DUR, D uh, working onto an, uh, a Constellation Aquila, uh, and then eventually a mighty Carrick or Endeavour for pro-level exploration. The ships that you um, you get here will give you more and more access to more and more missions and things to do. Now, obviously, you don't need to do missions. Pirates might be making their own paths um, entirely. Miners might be looking just for tasty resources. You don't need to be on a mission to do that sort of stuff. But progressing up to better and better ships will be one of the major prof uh, like progressions in game uh, and allow you to just to do more. That said, larger ships will all need crew uh, and some players will progress without the need of their own ship in this game. You're just going to be, well, I'm going to socially progress. I'm going to 
right? I'm going to work on a ship. I'm going to learn my craft. I'm going to be a really good um, shield operator or something. That is a totally legitimate form of progression. Mission paths and reputation. So missions will be pretty diverse in, in Star Citizen. They've got a modular system. So we've got a mixture of quite like... Um, cool theme park ride missions like we've seen sort of demos of in the 3.0 demos from 2016 but also more modular missions where they're kind of pieced together from lots of different missions they might be a bit dynamic missions are going to be one of the premier ways of earning uec uh, and some missions will lead on to other missions better missions and there might be mission chains also um others might be geared for your ship and equipment so some missions might only open up if you've got a certain ship uh, or might change difficulty in like what you can find based on who you are what you are your reputation and that sort of stuff but by completing missions with certain npcs and factions within star citizen this should help you get better and better missions and earn reputation with that npc and faction for example being friendly with the banu and doing lots of missions for them could allow you to eventually purchase a banu merchantman uh, from them or open up more trade routes uh, with them or give you more information on points of interest to visit and with that in mind information is power so information knowledge maps these are going to be massive parts of progression in star citizen you're going to be able to find more stuff to do uh, but also um, uh, materials npcs and areas to exploit with the more information that you have this can be points of interest on the planet locations of precious asteroids or wrecks in space map data for areas of space or planets even knowing about enemies and patrols in the area is useful information for pirates, um, especially actually, um, the learning trade routes, um, when and what causes cargo haulers to move in certain areas of space, whether and how to turn off calm arrays uh, in certain areas of space. There will be a huge amount of info that you can gather pertaining to um, the area of space that you're in, a planet that you're on, your ship. Uh, loadouts um, for different situations, your career, how to do each of the game mechanics efficiently, like mining, um, time-based info, um, what one's things happening in the verse. Uh, when are enemies here? When do things happen? Most uh, of this will come from actually playing the game, uh, but it is a way to progress and filling out your Moby Glass with as much data as you can is an important part of Star Citizen. Organ social stuff. So there might be progression within an organisation that you're part of. Each player-led org um, will have their own rules for progression, um, and you will need to ask someone that's appropriate in the position there. Uh, yeah, find a, an appropriate representative of an org that you're part of, or one that you're considering joining, to find more information about that. But earning money um, and gaining and getting into like better missions will all be benefits of org and group play i heartily recommend joining one um star citizen will have content for lone wolves but i'm sure there are even orgs for lone wolves to share information with each other they might not want to play together but they might want to share information uh, when not playing um, friends in game will give you access to more ships crewing is a legitimate way to get access to larger ships but also some uh, missions are going to require larger and group like based gameplay raids and that sort of stuff will be in star citizen but think of them as more dynamic rather than um, a set instance npc crews so npc crews and characters will be a thing in game you can you can about to hire or recruit npcs it's possible that you'll uh, about to get them like insurance as well health insurance too so that if your ship explodes that won't kill them uh, these npcs will effectively have stats or improve so this is like an exception to the no stats rule npcs will have stats they will have different um abilities at gunnery at shield operation at running um at fighting and um, they'll have different personalities as well some of them might be cowards some of them might be um very aggressive and that sort of stuff uh, on larger ships you might want to choose a few talented npcs to be officers for example in certain key areas of your ship like in engineering you might want like a, a super good engineer there and um, that you go this is an officer um, but npc progression is a thing uh, for your crew and it's gonna make gameplay much more interesting for people that go out of their way to find uh, and recruit the best npcs around but they they will get better or worse depending on what they do uh, at certain things as the game goes on death dying or losing your ship um, is part of the risk reward system in Star Citizen. Your NPCs can die, and you might lose them, and you can die, you might lose yourself. Losing ships will cost you um, at least time, but sometimes money as well. Uh, if you have insurance, um, you might not be able to get your ship back immediately still. So, uh, Idris is, they could take a few days to replace, for example. Dying, however, 
um, could lose you money, but also reputation. Star Citizen does have a permadeath mechanic. It's not you've been killed in your ship and you didn't eject, or you've been shot in the head, you're dead. It's nothing like that. If you get killed, it's assumed that you are recovered and deposited to a medibay or a hospital for healing. You'll wake up and maybe have a medical bill uh, for expenses or whatever, and possibly like a new bionic limb or a scar or something. However, there is a chance that you will be killed and not revivable and you are dead, permadead. Think of it more like that you have a certain amount of lives, but you don't know how many lives you have. Um, and uh, different types of things are more likely to take your lives away. So if you just eject from your ship, it's unlikely you'll lose a life. If you eject from your sh uh, you don't eject from a ship in time and you explode, you probably will lose a life. Uh, if you do perma-die, you'll have to create a new tune, a new character, but your ships and items will pass to the new character. There might be some form of death tax or reputation loss um, that could stunt your progress though. So just bear that in mind. It is risk reward, harder missions are more likely you might die. Uh, an afterthought. So some of these mechanics, or at least the progression, will start um, hopefully with a 3.0 patch. More missions, plants to explore, exploration of space, lots of things to do. Uh, probably more things to do with Alpha UEC as well, hopefully purchasing ships in-game. Uh, Star Citizen is a sandbox game, so progression really is what you decide. But I like to gauge it by UEC, uh, what ships you have, personal skill, information, and access to missions. But again, for a scientist in the verse with like an endeavor, finding biodata and creating new drugs could be your goal. Um, so it is kind of quite fluffy. So please tell me what is important to your progression uh, in Star Citizen. What do you like the idea of? Uh, do you like Star Citizen's no skills approach? Do you think that um, everything career wise and, and this sort of stuff will need signposting? Uh, or do you think people will go out of their way to learn careers via YouTube videos and stuff like that, uh, like they do on EVE? EVE has got quite a complex system for a lot of stuff. Uh, is there more to progression that I haven't mentioned? What would you like to see progression-wise? Because the joy of these videos is that we can um, kind of analyse stuff in Star Citizen, got to push it, even if it's just a light little push, into areas that we want. Obviously, um, there is a, a grander vision that we might not be seeing at the moment, but we're allowed to have our opinions, we're allowed to discuss them, uh, and hopefully influence the game into a direction that everyone likes. Remember, commenting on any of our Star Citizen videos during a given month gives you a chance to win a ship. For January, that's an Avenger Titan. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help me, and check out my, my Star Citizen YouTube channels for Star Citizen news and gameplays and guides and stuff like this. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the verse.